thank you for waking up early to attend and uh, just to make you all comfortable, I'm not going to talk for an hour and a half. Uh, my name is Tony Buva, and uh, the title of our talk today is uh, Beck McCulter Cares Initiative and how we are uh, working to advance and make healthcare accessible uh, for everyone. And this is our global initiative to support the fight against HIV AIDS and co-infections. And before I get started, I want to just uh, call out that um, our country manager, Renee Snyman, uh, has supported the ASLM conference uh, as a gold sponsor. And so we're very proud to, uh, to make that contribution and be part of the ASLM conference this year. It's my personal privilege to have the opportunity to share uh, our initiatives about what we're doing in the CARES program, uh, again, to support HIV and AIDS. So just a little bit about my background. Um, most of you do not know me. Uh, this is a relatively new position that was established for Beckman Coulter about two years ago. Uh, I have uh, functional experience essentially in commercial leadership roles at the country level in life sciences and diagnostics, and most recently in the clinical flow cytometry uh, organization, but also in, in molecular diagnostics, genomics, automations, and the analytical businesses. Uh, I've got 30 years of industry experience. Uh, in the past two years, I've worked hard to familiarize myself with the continent and some of the countries and some of the many challenges that the continent here in Africa faces. So I've traveled probably about throughout nine different countries uh, to orient myself and educate myself to some of the root cause issues that we face here. Uh, I have a BS uh, in management from the Sigwood, Sigmund Weiss School of Business at Susquehanna University. Uh, and because this is really a public health uh, initiative, uh, I've been inspired to enroll and I'm currently a graduate student at the Dornsheim School of Public Health at Drexel University, I'm pursuing a graduate degree in public health. So the, the position uh, is really about uh, developing relationships with all of the organizations that support the HIV AIDS global community. So these are the funding agencies, the implementing partners, the NGOs, the health policy organizations. Uh, we have essentially created a dedicated resource uh, for Beck McCoulter to advocate uh, for HIV AIDS position, uh, prevention. And this is the first ever position. Uh, and we've had, again, the opportunity, and it's been my privilege to uh, look for opportunities to be able to create a program that uh, is meaningful for the community. So today, uh, again, I'm not going to talk for an hour and a half, but uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about who we are and some of the foundational pillars of our program. I'll talk a little bit about the CARES initiative itself, give you some examples of the work, uh, a little bit about our partnerships, and then we'll finish up with any questions that anyone might have or any clarification that you'd like to hear from me. Uh, but essentially what we're trying to do uh, is create an approach that's a little bit different, a little bit unique. Uh, we're obviously a commercial enterprise where we offer products for HIV management. The initiative is really about looking for the opportunity to participate at a different level and also uh, to be able to contribute to the broader purpose. So a little bit about a heritage. Uh, many of you familiar with flow cytometry uh, have uh, a, a strong recognition with the Coulter Corporation and, and Walter and Joseph Coulter. Uh, the Coulter principle itself uh, is today one of the foundations of modern hematology uh, instruments that are used today. Uh, the other side of the uh, organization is, uh, was founded by Ar Arnold Beckman. So these three distinguished gentlemen were innovative uh, in their time and the two companies united in about 1998 to form Beckman Coulter. We're also part of a large uh, multiple holdings organization called Danaher. And uh, this company Danaher has uh, a number of divisions. I'll just highlight them quickly. There's the uh, dental uh, portfolio, diagnostics, life sciences, water quality, and product identification. 
So we essentially fit for Beck McCoulter in the diagnostics platform as well as the uh, life science platform. Uh, many of you are familiar with Cepheid. That was one of the most recent uh, mergers and acquisitions uh, by Danaher. So as they build uh, the portfolio, uh, it's interesting to see the uh, leverage uh, of the multiple holdings uh, that this organization uh, has been able to apply. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about why we're here, and we're all here, and, and what we do is because of the patient. Uh, and I'd like to reference uh, this photograph uh, that came from uh, Dr. Francois Venter. And so we all know that on any daily basis, there are thousands and, th thousands and thousands of samples that are run uh, to test patient samples, diagnose those patients. And so this famous picture uh, reminds us, and we like to think about this uh, anytime we give a presentation about the miracle and the difference that uh, ARVs makes and, and that make, that make and, and diagnostics make in, our, in the lives of the HIV patient. So a little bit about uh, the found, what we consider to be our foundational pillars for the uh, CARES initiative. Uh, what we're looking to do is uh, participate, create network participation, engagement, uh, we believe that we have a lot to contribute in the community, so we'd like to be in a position to influence. And so the way we see that happening is developing these relationships with all of these organizations that I've mentioned before. So that's really kind of the, 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 the top pillar that we see as an important step for us in this initiative. The middle part is really about developing partnership opportunities uh, where Beckman Coulter is able to contribute for the broader purpose. And I'll talk about an example or two uh, that we have uh, which represents a partnership. Uh, we are looking to expand in this middle area. I think there's a lot of unmet need there and so it's a matter of engagement uh, between the private and the public sector. And then lastly, <clears throat> I think if we're uh, effective in the first two pillars, uh, the innovative solutions and the comprehensive portfolio that we offer is going to make a difference and I think that uh, Many people that are in HIV patient management are going to understand that and begin to seek out some of our solutions that we offer. So as I mentioned, uh, the CARES initiative is essentially our stake in the sand to say, we're here, uh, we want to help, we want to contribute, and we want to make a difference in the fight against HIV AIDS. Danaher has a, a very large uh, corporate social responsibility and so this is one of the reasons uh, and one of the inspirations for our initiative itself. Uh, we do believe that there is a social and a civic opportunity or responsibility to support what's happening here in these high burden markets. And I just want to highlight a couple of things here uh, about the, in terms of how Danaher thinks. Uh, one of the things that we live by is, is, is innovation. So we want to be able to really improve quality of life through innovation, innovating new products. <clears throat> Secondly, we want to promote uh, responsible environmental stewardship. That's also very important to us. We also want to make sure that we're investing and in growing in all of the associates uh, worldwide. And then also extremely important is that uh, we always operate with uh, integrity and would never ever uh, ever give up any uh, integrity for, to violate any compliance issues. So we lastly want to make sure that through this social responsibility, we're demonstrating leadership and responsibility in our communities around the world. And that's the other aspect of this. We really want to be involved at the community level. So I mentioned uh, we are looking to contribute and participate in public-private partnerships. Uh, this is something uh, that uh, was a session yesterday morning uh, in one of the uh, satellites that was hosted by the Gates Foundation and CHI. And it was interesting to me to hear uh, some of the disconnect between countries, so public sector, private sector. Uh, this is something we're very serious about. This is something we want to pursue. It's complex. Uh, so it's very difficult to be able to map out and bring the right people together to be able to make these partnerships work. Uh, this is one of our goals, and uh, this is one of the primary uh, pillars of the CARES initiative.
In order to do that, uh, I think it's important also for us to make sure that we're in alignment with all of their efforts. And so there's, there's a lot of organizations that are involved uh, in supporting uh, bilaterally, directly, uh, implementing partners. So it's important for us to understand and be aligned strategically with all of those organizations. That's the other aspect of the initiative. If we're misaligned, I think we're gonna be disconnected. So it's very important that we have, uh, I think, alignment strategically with these organizations so that we're moving in the right direction together. We primarily are concentrating on the continent of Africa uh, since that's where the majority of the burden of HIV resides. Uh, we're also interested in other high burden markets, but we've really begun our initiative here uh, in Africa. And then just a little bit about our program goals. Uh, someone said yesterday, uh, I think that uh, this is now ubiquitous. I think that uh, everyone's very familiar with the 9090. 90, uh, so we do support the 9090 uh, in a variety of ways uh, for, with test solutions. Uh, we also want to be able to look to increase our test menu for HIV monitoring, including comorbidities. We also want to make sure that we are listening and aware of uh, unmet critical health needs uh, by the, at the country level, uh, at the community level. Uh, we also want to make sure that we have a presence in the community. And so this is very important to us as well. Uh, we don't want this to be high level. We want this to be engagement uh, within, the, within the local communities. And then, um, again, mentioning partnership, excuse me, mentioning partnership, two areas that we're interested in. Uh, the first is lab strengthening, and the second is research. And uh, we know that there is an opportunity to build capacity for research here on the continent. Uh, that's, I think, another area of opportunity for partnership, not only for Beck MacArthur, but probably for other organizations. But I think first and foremost, uh, lab strengthening systems uh, are still uh, in a great opportunity for, cap uh, for a capacity building. So I'm not going to go through this in great detail, but uh, I put this slide up because we've been participating uh, in HIV analysis since the 1980s. And uh, we've also, uh, many of you are probably familiar with the Coulter Epic series, uh, which was, uh, uh, quite well known, again, that name Coulter. Uh, we have also had a low cost CD4 test, which uh, handled aged blood well. Um, we also were able to develop a very, sorry, uh, fat fingers. Uh, we had a high throughput platform, uh, which included an automated system for sample preparation. Uh, we've also had a long relationship with the Clinton Health Access Initiative. Uh, there have been many, uh, I think, changes in staff on both sides of the uh, organization's ours and theirs, so, but we still maintain a good relationship with this organization. They're an important uh, implementing partner in many countries, so we want to make sure we continue to provide a good in, uh, relationship with that organization. Uh, we introduced our Acquia CL uh, in June of 2014. It obtained USDA 510K clearance. We're now WHO pre-qualified. We're also CE marked and UL rated. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the CARES Award, which we just launched this week in conjunction with World's Aid Day. And there's going to be a little bit about a lab strengthening pilot that we uh, started uh, last year uh, in Uganda. So I'm gonna share a little bit about that as some examples. So as I mentioned, um, we, we launched what we're calling the Annual CARES Award. And I believe that we may have missed the cutoff date uh, because of some uh, language translations. Uh, but the press has gone out. Uh, I know that Google has picked that up. Some of you may have seen that. Um, some key dates I just want to mention here are uh, we're, we're actually going to have nominations, so uh, individuals in their communities will be nominated for this annual award. Uh, there will be community voting, and then there will be a short list ba based upon uh, the number of votes, and then an award uh, will be made uh, in uh, 2017 uh, so that we can honor uh, the person who's the recipient of the award, and then the top three individuals that have been recognized. 
a little bit more about the award so that you get a little bit more of an in, uh, impact here. We think that there is a lot of work that's being done at the community level where there are very dedicated individuals who are working on a volunteer basis to make the difference in people's lives. And so through the award, uh, we'd like to recognize some of that good humanitarian work that's being done uh, on a day in, day out basis. And uh, many of these stories are not recognized or unknown. So through the award, uh, we aim and the goal is to be able to recognize this commitment by these phenomenal individuals who are inspirations to their community. There will be a uh, cash donation that will be directed toward a predefined list of charities uh, in the award recipient's name. And then as mentioned, uh, there will be uh, probably three to five uh, other individuals who made the short list uh, based upon the nominations uh, who will also be recognized for their work and will develop press around their, their good, dedicated uh, community involvement. Um, we have formed a panel of judges, which is essentially our independent advisory committee. And so we believe that we have a, a very uh, professional uh, panel of judges here, an esteemed group of individuals, uh, beginning with Maureen Murtaugh, who's from the International Diagnostic Center at London School of Hygiene. Uh, we also have Dr. Francois Venter. Uh, Anna Teasdale is from Pangea Global AIDS, uh, but she's also not She's, she's not new to this community. She's uh, been with the Coleman Foundation and Catholic Relief Services. We have Dr. Leslie Scott uh, here from WIT, uh, who's on our uh, board, and also Dr. Francesca Saletti. So these individuals are going to be the people who will be the, uh, make the decision on the final award and really the top five uh, individuals that will be recognized. And then as I mentioned, we are compiling, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a list of predefined charities so that when awards are made, uh, they can be directed toward these uh, predefined charities. Hillcrest Trust uh, is an organization that does some good work in Durban. Uh, we came across them uh, earlier this year. Uh, they've been our first charity that we've identified and would be the recipient of the first year's award. Uh, for the cash donation. These people do some incredible work and uh, some of you may be already familiar with the Hillcrest uh, AIDS Center Trust, uh, but this is an example of one of the charities uh, which we will be able to utilize. The goal is eventually uh, we would have uh, key po basically uh, charitable organizations that uh, are related to the key populations uh, around the the country and situated geographically through Africa. So that if someone in West Africa is an award recipient, they might be able to more relate to a charity uh, from that particular part of the, of the country. So BFLA is uh, the Burkitt Lymphoma Fund for Africa. <clears throat> and this is another example of where Beck McCoulter is getting involved and uh, trying to help what's happening here on the continent. And the Burkitt Lymphoma Fund for Africa is operated uh, out of Seattle. Uh, and we have a partnership with Phenopath Laboratories, uh, who is uh, supporting the, uh, the BFLA uh, to be able to diagnose uh, Burkitt lymphoma in children. And they have a couple of laboratories that they have established uh, in East Africa. And so we have uh, provided uh, uh, some gifts in kind of flow cytometers uh, and panels for them to be able to run those uh, patient samples and diagnose the Burkitt lim lymphoma in children. So this is another example of how Beck McCoulter is trying to make a difference and uh, partner and uh, become involved uh, in this uh, area of opportunity. Um, and also this is actually uh, something I'd like to share which is an innovation from our service organization that supports our large chemistry systems. Uh, this is a story I came, about, uh, came upon earlier in the year, which was worth sharing, because it's another example of how Beck McCoulter is actually making a difference uh, in the lives of people. But in Swaziland, uh, they utilize our large chemistry systems, which gen generate and utilize a lot of water uh, in their operation. Um, most of that water just goes to waste. And as some of you probably know, Swaziland uh, has been or has been in a 
in a drought. And so it didn't seem like a real sensible thing to just waste water to run our chemistry system. So the, the local service organization took it upon themselves to innovate basically a water reclamation project. And so they've actually devised a method to be able to recycle that water that's used to be able to run uh, the large chemistry systems that support uh, HIV patient samples. And uh, this is uh, just actually our plug uh, for another satellite later today. Uh, and the reason I have this in here is because I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the good work that's happening in Uganda. Um, I've had the privilege to be uh, working uh, with some of the individuals uh, from the Uganda Central Public Health Laboratories. Uh, there will be a joint uh, seminar which I'd like to make you all aware of. Perhaps you'll be able to attend at 1245 today. It's in the same room. Uh, and it will talk about their specimen hub transport system supporting the scale up of viral load monitoring. So uh, the, the specimen uh, referral and hub transport system in Uganda was actually named uh, best practice uh, by Pangea Global AIDS and the Gates Foundation. This work was presented uh, at the 2016 IAS Congress. And uh, Charles Kiaga is their national uh, coordinator. Uh, he presented the work. Uh, it was a collaboration, um, excuse me, collaboration between Uganda, Chai, uh, and Pangea. Uh, Pangea was actually contracted by uh, the Gates Foundation to do this work. So they have a very nice system. Uh, you could hear a little bit more about that uh, this afternoon. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little, bit of, a little bit more about what's happening in Uganda because they've made incredible strides uh, toward the uh, achievement of the 90-90-90 goals. Uh, it's a privilege and honor for us to be involved uh, in Uganda and what's happening there as a healthcare partner. So uh, quickly, this is actually uh, Charles' uh, slide uh, that he presented at IAS. I'm not going to belabor this, but uh, the results that they have achieved uh, in turnaround time uh, in terms of patient samples, uh, transporting them from collection sites into their national reference center has been incredible. Uh, and you can see some of the metrics here are quite phenomenal, but they're making a very large difference uh, in uh, how they handle early infant uh, uh, diagnosis as well as other patient uh, viral load samples as they transport from collection site uh, to the hub system in the National Reference Laboratories. So as I mentioned, um, we had the opportunity to become involved uh, in Uganda uh, last year. And so one of the things that we had heard about was uh, the, the tremendous progress that they had made and the network that they had said, set up in their hub and spoke system. And so we, uh, we actually were able to tour the country and actually witness uh, their hub system and how it worked and how it worked effectively. And uh, simultaneous, this was happening with the best practice study by Pangea and Gates. But what we did, and the reason I have this slide here, is I want to share with you a little bit about how Beck McCoulter works and how the CARES initiative can be applied in certain problem solving situations. Um, we have some very unique tools uh, that were applied here in this particular situation to bas basically value, value stream map uh, their entire process of how they move sample from a collection site uh, back into a reference laboratory or a central hub system. And so by looking at this critically, and this is just some photographs of the session, we had a three-day workshop, uh, and I think that some people in the room that are here participated in that workshop uh, from Uganda. But we, we used this process um, to be able to look for opportunities to, to streamline some of the bottlenecks that were identified by the team of people. And I think there were about 20, 25 people there uh, to go through this exercise. Uh, the result of this was that there were waste reduction uh, targets that were identified that they felt were going to be able to enable them to be more efficient in their uh, network system and their delivery of services in that hub system. So they were looking at things like inventory stockouts, and these are all, uh, I think, very very common uh, 
challenges that people face, um, their, tent, their turnaround time, how long does it take for a sample to actually get from point A to point B, and then also rejection rates, which is really our quality uh, assurance issue. So uh, the outcome of this was that there was a new process and function called a regional hub coordinator that was identified. And so we, uh, through this work, uh, have entered into a partnership with the Central Public Health Laboratories of Uganda to pilot uh, this particular idea uh, of having a regional hub coordinator, which is essentially there to coordinate all of the essential functions that are needed to be able to coordinate in very remote parts of the country to make the system work and provide better access to health care for their patients. So the toolbox that we use is called Danaher Dana Business System, not to be confused with dry blood spot. Uh, and so we have a uh, very disciplined approach. Uh, this is one of the value packages that we, that we bring as a Danaher company or a Danaher family of companies. I'm not gonna go into great detail here, uh, but it is a process. Uh, and normally we take about five days to do this. Uh, in Uganda, we, we streamline that in about three days. But we take a very critical look at the entire process. Uh, we do some in-depth problem solving to arrive at an implementation and an action plan. And uh, these are also some of the uh, operational processes that we look at uh, when we apply uh, some of our problem solving skills using DBS. Um, many times, and a lot of these are, I think, common to everyone and they're very transferable to whatever you do, whether you're a manufacturing operation, you're a healthcare facility, uh, what have you, they're all very, very common. Um, but uh, transportation is very common uh, in Uganda and I think probably other companies, countries. Transportation is a key issue. Um, so getting a product or patient samples from point A to B is very, very important. Quality defects, so sample, inject, uh, sample rejection rates in this, in this case are very, very important. Um, another example here is inventory. And so uh, we all know that a lot of times it's very difficult to obtain reagents and other critical supplies to keep systems running in remote parts of countries. And so this process looks at all of these operational processes, uh, and that's essentially what we did in Uganda to put together the pilot. And this is also just an example of how we really dig deep into root cause uh, to really understand what's happening. After we create that value map process, we really dive deep to understand what's really the root cause of the issues here that need to be corrected and then we put that corrective action plan into place. And uh, once you, you, once we, this is called an impact matrix, but once you have the root cause, uh, there's usually a very long list of root causes that many times are confused, uh, that really are not root causes, but this is what we call an impact matrix to be able to prioritize what should we focus on to make the largest impact in terms of uh, prioritizing root, root causes and then making a difference in terms of applying uh, that, uh, that problem uh, learning. And then there really, uh, we apply five principles uh, which are listed right here in terms of how we apply these principles uh, in our DBS toolbox. So uh, we put this in place in Uganda as I mentioned. Um, it really goes hand in hand with the best practice that's already in place uh, with the sample transport network that they have. Um, I wanna mention the pilot itself. It's a small piece of what they've accomplished, but the team in Uganda felt that there were some critical areas that they felt they, they needed to improve and they, they wanted to improve. If you go to the talk today, you'll hear a little bit more about uh, their, their overarching vision of uh, how they can improve it even more. Uh, but this is just a quick snapshot, uh, and Abraham is here. Uh, he's the actual project coordinator in Arua. Uh, but this is basically a representation of before the, the central coordination was put in place and then <laughs> after the central coordination. There's been a, quite a dramatic difference in terms of uh, what they've been able to accomplish. I don't know if you can see some of these slides, but these are volumes of samples um, from various hub sites. And this is an example of a central coordination area uh, that we're piloting. There would be about uh, 10 to 14 such sites 
throughout the country to make each one of these centers operate efficiently. Each hub, in this case the Arua district, which is where Ibrahim is located, he coordinates about eight to ten uh, hubs that serve that central hub. And so the results here have been quite phenomenal and uh, we're privileged and honored to be able to be part of this pilot and uh, we're looking to expand this partnership further. Um, and I borrowed this from Ibrahim himself, uh, so this is not my slide, this is Ibrahim's slide right here. Um, and so this is a really example of uh, what an infective hub system would look like. Uh, in the end, you've got very happy babies that are getting better patient care. I'm glad that, I'm glad that, uh, that was able to work on the, <laughs> wasn't sure that was going to work on here. Um, so uh, I want to just talk a little bit about the next steps that are happening. Uh, the idea here is that the concept of a central coordinator uh, is going to be a measurable outcome that is clear and evident uh, in terms of implementation. And so what we want to be able to do is support the country toward uh, obtaining sustainable funding to be able to implement fully uh, that central coordination concept uh, throughout the country to improve patient access to health care uh, in Uganda. And then um, I mentioned earlier that uh, research capacity building is another area that we view as very important uh, for Africa. And some of you may be familiar with an organization called Aortic, uh, which is really uh, a dedicated organization. They're based in, uh, in, in Accra, uh, Ghana, uh, and it's a group of uh, basically volunteers uh, from all over the world uh, who are supporting um, uh, capacity building for cancer research. And so uh, we are actually now partnering with Aortic. Uh, we've been invited to participate uh, in their uh, laboratory uh, workshop session ahead of the AACR. Uh, right back here in Cape Town in January, so we're, we're privileged and honored uh, to be able to, to participate in that. There's actually a whole list of, um, of workshops, probably about 10 or 15 uh, of different individuals. Uh, we've been invited by Aortic to talk a little bit about how we're trying to work and engage uh, with countries um, throughout Africa. And then, um, in conclusion, I want to uh, just go through a couple of highlights uh, that we think are important to leave behind. Um, we want to engage with countries uh, for healthcare partnerships. And it's not abundantly clear and evident uh, how we go about doing that, uh, but we, uh, I think we've made some progress. Uh, we're gonna keep at it, and uh, we're gonna look to expand some of the partnerships that we have uh, already in place. Uh, the goal is to uh, advance healthcare access uh, for patients uh, in Africa and all hybrid markets. Uh, we think that there are some uh, private sector tools uh, for problem solving approaches that can be unique. Uh, DBS, again, not dry blood spot, but Dan her business system, I think is, is applicable here. Uh, we would like to contribute it as a private sector company uh, to help uh, some uh, public sector uh, organizations or uh, countries uh, apply some of these tools uh, to some of the issues and challenges that they face. And then we want to be able to continue to listen to uh, the unmet needs that are overwhelming and not currently being addressed. And then part of my job is to communicate that back to our business uh, so that we can uh, understand and think about that as we uh, develop our products for the future. It's important that we understand and we address this market uh, as opposed to a developed market because uh, I think there are different challenges uh, in a high barred market like Africa, for example, compared to a developed market. So we want to make sure we continue to listen uh, to the unmet needs that are identified. And then, of course, we want to support capacity building for lab strengthening and research. And so that's where uh, the engagement uh, for partnerships comes in. And then I would be remiss if I didn't uh, talk a little bit uh, and at least show you some of the 
uh, test solutions that we have in our HIV portfolio, which seem to be growing every day. Uh, but there's a lot of basic uh, testing that we can provide. I think we're in a unique position. Uh, there's some very innovative things here, such as our new hematology analyzer, which can be operated uh, off of a solar panel. It also has the ability to port uh, data uh, through a uh, cloud limb system. And of course, uh, we've got our recently uh, launched viral load platform. Uh, we also have a CD4 enumeration platform. Uh, we also uh, participate in leukemia and lymphoma testing, and we see that as an emerging market opportunity here on the continent, uh, as we know that uh, there's a direct correlation between some lymphomas and CD4 counts. So we've pr been participating in this for quite some time, and uh, I believe we're a leader in that field. And then, of course, we have routine systems for uh, chemistry uh, and uh, hematology as well. And with that, uh, I will end. And if there are any questions or comments uh, that anyone would like to make, I'd like to thank you for, again, coming here early uh, and uh, sitting with us and participating in our talk this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you.